Welcome to Adding Remote Support to Parted Magic. In this segment, we will configure Parted Magic so that after it boots, it initiates a remote support session to us. We will also make it accessible over a local network via VNC. To contact us or to learn about other video series as well as our consulting services, please visit OpenSmallBusinessSolutions.com. To do this, we will create a startup.sh script. We will also create a tweaks.txz package. We'll open the ISO of Parted Magic with ISO Master. Then we will add the startup script to PMagic PModules scripts. We will add the tweaks to PMagic PModules. After that, we'll remaster the CD and finally we'll test it. Before we get started, I'd like to explain the purpose of the files. The startup.sh script executes the main script at startup. The tweaks.txz is a package that contains five files. The main script launches reverse VNC session, and if that fails, it starts up the VNC server so that you can do a forward VNC connection into the machine. Support.sh is a script to manually launch the reverse VNC session. VNC server.sh is a script to manually launch the VNC server. Support.desktop is a desktop shortcut to run the support script. And VNC server.desktop is a desktop shortcut to run the VNC server script. So let's get started. First, I want to go into the Synaptic Package Manager. We'll start typing in ISO master. And we can install the package. Now we want to go into our text editor. We're going to create the startup shell script. In the root scripts directory, we're going to have this execute the main script.sh. This file is going to execute the main script. The ampersand sign at the end will allow the boot up process to continue even though the main script is not completed. We're going to save the file. We'll call it startup.sh. And close out. Now we're going to create the main script. This is going to be a shell script. And the file gets put in the scripts folder. One of the important things to do is to wait long enough for the GUI to load before the VNC server starts. If the VNC server starts before the GUI loads, it will fail. I found that 60 seconds seems to work pretty well. Next, we want to make the reverse VNC connection. You can do this either by IP address or by DNS name. I usually use a DNS name with a dynamic DNS address.
So we have X11 VNC with our switches. We have dash connect. And this is the IP address or DNS name, colon. And then we have the port number. I'm using 5901 in this example. The second line is going to start the VNC server so that if you're on a local area network, you'll be able to get into the machine that way. X11 VNC dash XKB dash no X record dash no X fixes dash no X damage dash RFB port 5900, so that's going to be listening on 5900. And then we have our dash O, which is the output file, goes into the var log x11vnc.log. So now we can save our changes. We'll create a folder called root. And inside that folder, we'll create another folder called scripts. And we're going to save this as main underscore script dot sh. We can exit out of there. The next file is going to be the support dot sh. It's going to be a shell script. And we're going to run x11vnc-connect. And then we're going to put in our IP address or DNS name again, followed by a colon and then the port number. We can save that inside of the scripts folder again as support.sh. We can open up a new file. Close out the old one. This is going to be VNC server.sh. We're going to run X11 VNC with our command line switches. And again, we're going to use port 5900 for the listening. We can save our changes in the scripts folder. And we're going to call that VNC server.sh. Create a new file. Close out of the old one. This is going to be a desktop shortcut that launches the support.sh script. This is useful if you want to start a remote support session after the system is booted up. For example, if the system is connected to the network via Wi-Fi, you can boot it up, connect the Wi-Fi connection, and then double-click on the shortcut to initiate the connection. The name is going to be support. We're going to use the ROX term command to execute this script. Terminal is false. Type is application.
we're going to save our changes and we're going to create a new folder called desktop with a capital D and we're going to call this support.desktop save and we're going to copy this create a new file and this time instead of it being support we're going to call this VNC server and instead of running the support script we're going to run the VNC server script we can save our changes go into the desktop folder and we'll call that VNC server dot desktop click save and exit out now we can go into our file manager go to the downloads folder and the root folder as you can see we have our support desktop and our VNC server dot desktop as well as our main script our support script and our VNC server script we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to change the permissions to full permissions on all the files that we just created We're just going to verify that that took effect. And we can exit out of the command prompt. The next thing that we want to do is convert the root folder into a TXZ file. We're going to right click on it and click compress. The option we're looking for is .tar.xz. We're going to call the file tweaks and create it. There's actually no difference between a .tar, .xz file, and a .txz file. Parted Magic is looking for a .txz file though, so we will rename the extension to .txz. Next we can go into ISO Master. If we go to File, and open, we can open up the ISO of Parted Magic. Then we go into the PMagic folder and the PModules folder. The tweaks.txz gets added as a module. And in the scripts folder, we can put the startup.sh. Next thing we need to do is save our changes. So we click File and then Save As. And we can give this a new name. I'm going to call this PMagic Remote Support and I'll put a date at the end. We can click Save. And it creates the new ISO. Click OK and we can close out of that. Now we have our new ISO with the modifications built into it. That concludes this segment. In this segment, we added remote support to Parted Magic. We did this by creating the startup shell script as well as the tweak script. These scripts contain the files that allow remote support. We opened the ISO image up with ISO Master, added the modifications to the image, and then remastered it. In the next segment, we will test our remote support.